Community Matters here. It's a two o'clock block on a given Friday, and we have a wonderful surprise. <laughs> we, are, we are honored to have with us today Senator Sharon Moriwaki, formerly, gosh, uh, a lifetime of energy at the Hawaii <laughs> Energy Policy Forum and various other things in and around the university and government. But now she's a state senator. We are so happy to have this conversation with her. Hi, Sharon Moriwaki, Senator Sharon Moriwaki. Hi, Jay. I'm so glad to be back here in this seat, which we had for many years together, and I miss it, quite yeah. frankly. It's yeah. good to be back. Yeah, we know you carved your initials in the table. Yeah, yeah, it's right now. there. there it <laughs> <laughs> so you, you decided to run for the Senate. This is really important, and I would like, uh, our, I like our listeners and viewers to understand why you did that and, and uh, what, you know, what, what were the factors that made you do it? Uh, and what were the experiences that, that made you win? Hmm. You have 30 minutes on this show? <laughs> <laughs> um, for me, it had to do with Kaka'ako, where, where I live. Um, and I think all of politics should be local. It should be where you come from, what the concerns are of the community. And, and we, quite frankly, felt we did not have a voice at the state legislature. Uh, buildings were going up without control, uh, sea level rise without control. Uh, we don't have control, but, you know, without being able to well, do something about it. Well, you were active in those it. issues for a long time. And, and um, a, a lot of, a lot of the, the community felt they weren't being represented. And so um, I did look around for other people to, to run for the Senate um, to get that representation. We have it in the House. Speaker Spikey is a really good representative for Kaka'ako. He looks out for us. And, and a number of bills were passed in the, in the previously. Um, so um, I decided if no one's taking it, I'll take it for the team. So, um, so I, I decided uh, uh, after long and hard thinking about what it would take, how much work there would be, and, and I had a group of, of supporters, people, my neighbors, who said, yes, we're in it to win it, let's go. And so that's issue the start. driven, you're community driven. It's, it's different than a lot of people who run for office, actually. We had a lot of issues. We had uh, the uh, whole Kaka'ako development go well, according to plan, have good people on the board, have them listen to the community. Of course, we want building. We want to have housing for, for our residents. We want to have commercial activity. We want our roads paved. We wanted all of that, but we also wanted it to be done in, in, in the idea, the, the, the whole idea of it was to build housing for our people build activities for our people, build parks and trees for our people. And it wasn't being done that way. Project by project came on. Some of them had variances that were, that were, um, that were passed on and, and agreed to without hearing the community. So, so that was the genesis of it. Um, as we went along, I, I had to study the community. So it was more than Kaka'ako. It was Waikiki. It was Makali, Mo'ili'ili. And, and I went door to door as where I could, because a lot of, the, I think this district is the most condo rich district. So it, it really it was hard to get into a number of these, these um, condos. Uh, but where I could walk. I mean, you can't I just did. knock at somebody's front door in yeah, a condo. Yeah. yeah, you can't go in. They, have, they think they're restricted. They aren't, because we were able to get into some condos. And I sent postcards out and so on to, to send a message out that we really need a voice. And I will be your voice, basically. That was the message. We need to preserve the Hawaii we love. And uh, we need to take control back of our community. This is old-fashioned campaigning. It, it, I, actually, when you a... talk about that, yes, it was, because I had no money. Nobody was contributing <laughs> to me. So I had to do it the only way I knew how, which was... Knock on the door and yeah, say hi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and lo and behold, as I knocked on doors, they, they didn't know who their senator was, number one. Or two, if they did, and I said, he was representing you for the past 10 years, how come you don't know? And they said, oh, really? Well, brother didn't there too long. You know, <laughs> it was either that or the other. And so then, then the momentum started to build because people had a choice. And, and to me, that's what the good side of politics is, is to give people a choice. You, you know, if you stay on too long and you forget who pays your salary, yeah, it basically. It really should right? not be a career. Yeah. Yeah, it really should be some, I mean, if you're doing a good job and you're really representing your community and you don't lose touch with your community, I think 
you continue on. But if you do, and sometimes the politicking at a different level and for different purposes, uh, it, they may all kind of relate back to your community. If I'm a chair, if I do this, I do that, I might bring home some capital improvements to my district. But overall, you really need to look at what is, what is it that people want and need in your community. And mm -hmm. every legislator does that, mm -hmm. you know, just different sure. ways in which you're doing. Part of the representative know, doing, process. Yeah. So what about uh, what about Waikiki? That's you know this you have a huge big district I for do. sure. I a do. lot of population, a lot of construction, a lot of capital investment, maybe more than any other actually in the state. Waikiki, huge, big. It's the engine of our economy, and that's your district. It is, it is, uh, and and even there we've got a lot of the hotels, the resort industry, but there is a sliver of residential. Yeah. And, and the issue, which was the touch point, was, was short-term rentals. And that's where the hotels came together with the community, um, looking at unpermitted short-term rentals that were taking not only housing that could be affordable out of, the, out of the pool, the inventory, but also raising the average daily, daily um, um, revenues, yeah, spending yeah. for the hotels. So there was an issue that had we not stepped back and say, what is good for our community? The marriage of all of these different sectors, so to speak, would not have come together and seen, oh my God, this is taking away our Hawaii. And thanks to the city council and the mayor uh, uh, approving Bill 89, and now is law, teeth were put into enforcement, into the department planning and permitting, for neighbors to call on the department to say, hey, you know, I see too many luck, 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 luck coming through my building. You know, can you take a look at this and have some teeth to, to make sure that housing that is permitted for short-term rentals is for short-term people and, and residential is for residents. It's all about housing. And in, in Kaka'ako, it's, um, it's largely about the homeless, I suppose, in, in Waikiki as well. So that's a huge burden. That, that, uh, that's a burden that Josh Green has uh, rolled up his sleeves about. Um, and I suppose uh, that's one of the most important issues in our state. So now you get into the legislature, um, and you won handily, as I recall. I, I was at your, your party. <laughs> what do you call it? Uh, your, Fix your party. Yeah, and there were millions of people there. <laughs> and I tell you, they love you. They come from all sides. They love you. And, and I guess the question is, so now... Now, you know, there's uh, the opening day in January of this year, about the middle of January, and people are lining up at the door, uh, well-wishers and all this. Um, so what happened from that day till now uh, in your experience in the ledge? Um, so interesting, because you know what? <clears throat> we, we're there with you, Sharon. Thank we you. I need you there eyes. with me. <laughs> <laughs> I need you there. <laughs> That's what I tell people is that, you know, I'm working on your behalf. You have to tell me what you see as problems, what you see as possible solutions, because I'm one person in the legislature, but I can talk to other people if I have you behind me and saying this is important for us and this is important not only for our district, but across the board in other districts facing the same problems like homeless, like the opioid. Um, epidemic and, yeah, yeah. and looking at, we monitor that. So there were a number of bills that I was um, successful. I passed four bills. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, let's talk yeah. about them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then, and then I had support, supporting, because I sit on the housing committee, we got a number of the housing bills to get affordable housing continuing, and, um, and a lot of older people in my district. So um, we have a number of bills that are for the elderly to age in place um, passed. So it, on, on those issues, it was a banner year. On, on some others, um, it takes more work. And so we go back next year to work on those. Um, so for me, it was rewarding to see that, um, that there are good people in the legislature. You know, when you're on the advocacy side, it's always so easy because you just have one issue. You, you know, you can go full on, do all the work on getting it passed. On the other side, you know, you've got other people have the same problems. And, you know, if I did something in my district, oh, it's going to impact the next district because the homeless are going to move into my district. So, <laughs> you know, you say, oh, okay, <laughs> let's go back to the drawing board and see what can be helpful to all of us on solving the homeless issue. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. 
collaborative um, government. Yeah, it, it really is. And, and um, I, I was very pleasantly surprised that, that there is collaboration and there is trading and all of that. But they do defer, at least in the Senate, they do defer that you come from a district. So when we rise to speak, I'm the senator from Kaka'ako. Of course, I want to say Kaka'ako, Waikiki. I want to say it all. You got to yeah. say it all in yeah. on one piece. So I am the senator from Kaka'ako. Yeah, yeah. So when things happen in Kaka'ako, at least I can, I can voice my concern or my support because that is my district. And it's a big district. I mean, I forgot to mention population. You have a huge number of people in your district, too. So, you, you know, you speak softly diverse. and carry a big stick. It's, you know? Yeah, it's, it's pretty diverse. <laughs> so I, I see my district as having three communities. There's the Makalimo Ili Ili, which is an older, older um, community. And then there's Kaka'aka, which is a younger, the professional, and, um, and, and some commercial people who work and live there. And then, and there's Waikiki, which ha the residents are older and they're, they're more stable. But you have the resort area that you also need to, to balance with the residents. Yeah. Well, so, so as your district goes, in my view, so goes the state. There's so much economic activity and population in there, so much action going on. So there you are, January 15th or so. Uh, till now, and you sit in your office, a splendid senatorial <laughs> office there in the legislative I, building. And, I humble and abode. People come in. They come in from your constituents, uh, from the people you knocked on the door about. They come in from industry. They come in from you know other other senators and representatives. They they come in from all walks of government because you oversight on so many agencies. What's it like? What do they What do they say when they come in? Do they Do they make demands? They say, Sharon, you promised me this, that, and the other thing, deliver. Oh, what do they say? Some do. <laughs> do, they, <laughs> but, do they? But for the most part, I think, I think people come with their stories. This is why it's important to me. This is why it's important to my clients. Um, and they all, they all come. And, and I think as an advocate, the easy job, as I said earlier, is you've got, you know this is the right thing. <laughs> but when you sit... On the other side of the table, you hear all sides of everybody being right. And you want to. And, you know, and you, you listen to that. So I think the, the hardest job is, is listening and making a decision in the end of what is the best for the, for the largest number of people in our community. And there are a lot of different sides to the story. Well, you have, you have special... When I say life experiences that led you to this place, I mean one of them is uh, you have multiple graduate degrees, including a law degree. Um, you spent a lot of time at the university uh, in public policy. Um, you are familiar with the business community. You are familiar with the governmental community. And I can't think of anybody really who <laughs> I know who has been all around the state this way uh, over many years. Uh, rubbing shoulders and making deals and motivating people to do things as, as you. So these skills have to play into the way it works as a senator. Tell me how that works. Again, uh, I'm just, this is just my first year, you know. So I'm just learning. So, so for me, it's listening and learning. Uh, it's seeing what's important and, and hearing as many people as possible on, on the issues. There are many, many issues. Um, and uh, trying to make the best decision uh, that will help the most people. So, so the difficulty is you don't hear from everybody. Um, I get lots of emails. Uh, I get people walking by and people who pay people to walk by. Uh, and, and you have to weigh because not all of the the lobbyists are, are bad, right? They represent different groups that speak for different... Necessary part of the, uh, right. of the governmental structure. And, and, and going past that to, okay, when they come in and, and talk about an issue, I'll ask them, what is, what is important then? What is the interest? How are you serving? What is, um, what is a compromise? So I always ask them, what do you live with? Because in the end, you're not going to have all this or all that. But what can we work together on? And, and a lot of times the advocates from the community, they don't have as much 
experiences that lobbyists who speak on behalf of their clients. Um, they don't know it's all of this or nothing. All of this or nothing. And 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 it's educating as well to say, well, what if it wasn't all or nothing? What what would work as a small step forward and test it out? Let's see what happens. You know. Um, so that's kind of where I was this past session, not knowing a lot of the people who came before me, um, just trying to, to see if there's common interest, and the interest has to be the public interest. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's your um, favorite part of the job? The people. The people. I bet it's yeah, the people, because people. you really like people. Yeah, it's the people, but it's also solving problems. It's looking at... Um, solutions and solutions that work. You know, it's not all legislating. It's um, it's using the position to actually work out with communities who and people who have not had a voice, and working with who is in power or who has seemingly the upper hand uh, to work together and see that that you're serving these people, um, um, and 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 having that conversation. And it may not always work one way or the other, but at least there's a conversation and an understanding that, hey, you're here and we're giving this money to you or we're supporting you because you're supposed to be serving those lesser than we. You're having fun. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, partially. Yeah, yeah, I am. I am. I am because I feel that as an advocate, they could say, oh, that's just Sharon, right? And now, at least when I ask them to come to meetings and we discuss it, we can try to work on solutions. So I'll ask you a question that you always ask people in our programs on the Hawaii Energy Policy <laughs> Forum. You you should know the question I'm going to ask you. What have been the most notable challenges for you in the past uh, session? The, the the challenges are challenges of any new environment. So it the challenge for me was knowing what what the environment was like. I mean, I, I had people telling me, oh, this or that, you know, but I had to learn for myself. And some were positive, some, you know, some were n not so positive, but you sort of work on it. And for me, if, if someone won't talk to me or they say, oh, you're lobbying me, and I say, okay, and I will go back and say, okay, you know, maybe there's another way <laughs> to get there. And, and through, and I won't name names, but through other people, the community, saying, if you want this, you've got to get the data, you've got to do this, and go talk to these people. Not me, but you. And, and I think it's working with people who have the heart, but don't have the know-how or the process, or they're so, so passionate they can't see that the end point is really more important than being right yeah, today. Yeah, you know? yeah. yeah, yeah. So you learn more about learned, the community this learned, way. Yeah. You learn maybe more than you knew even on how it works in, in these islands, but you also have the possibility of teaching people who come to you as one position or another about how it works, and you become a, a facilitator in, in a very large sense. When I say become, though, I want to ask you another question about becoming. How in the past, what is it, it's now seven months? Yeah. It's more than that, almost a year seven, since you actually months. ran and won. Um, no, it's about seven months. How have you changed? Because this is all dynamic, Sharon. Uh, you know, at any time in your life when you have this kind of transition, mm. it affects you. So my question is, I guess it's semi-personal, is, mm. is how does this affect you? How is it affecting you? You know, that's an interesting question because I don't think I've changed. It doesn't look <laughs> like you've changed. I don't. <laughs> seem like the same person to yeah, me. Yeah, I don't think I've changed. and. Um, I don't know, what is a senator, right? A senator works for the people. I was doing that before. A senator is there writing, you know, trying to get legislation through. I was doing that before. Uh, a senator has to listen, facilitate what the community interest is to try to get something through, uh, whether administrative or legislative. Um, I was doing that before. Um, I don't see that I'm any different. I, I think I'm learning protocol and how to, you know, do the, the political correctness, so to speak. Yeah, yeah. And, and in the Senate, you know, you just don't stand up and speak. You know, I mean, there's protocol and, and yeah. so on. I, I need to learn that. And, um, but I don't think that I've really changed. Um, well, you knew a lot of, you knew a lot of legislators. I mean, for years and years, you dealt with them. 
on legislation. You appeared at uh, committee meetings. You you talked to them on and off about so many things, um, and they were they were not lofty like that because you knew them. They were your friends, your mm -hmm. business and associates of one kind or another for years. So the question is, um, you know, now you're in similar relations with those same people who are still in office and with the people who come before all of you. And my, my guess would be, subject to confirmation, my guess would be is it's kind of the same thing. There's a, there's an, a, a, a democratization, uh, an equalness, at least in the way you conduct yourself with those people. Am I right? Mm -hmm. I, I think so. And, and I think for most of my colleagues in the Senate, and, and well, I don't know the House, I mean, I know the Senate, because that's where I was for the last seven months. Um, there is that kind of collegiality, that kind of, uh, we're trying to do what's good for our community. So, you, you, you know, it, some you're closer to than others, I mean, in terms of relationships. Uh, so you can talk, you know, sort of, I need to, to, to really discuss this matter or not. Some, you know, I've got to get to know better, <laughs> and hopefully that will happen. Uh, Optimism but, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I think everybody is there to do good. And, um, and, and that's what I think I've learned, um, is that you can hear people say about this person or that person, you know. But when you're there and you're actually voting or deliberating, and it, Everybody is trying to, in their mind, it's doing good, you know. Um, so it's, it really is um, different being on, on this side of the table because you can see how hard the work is that you don't see on the other side. You say, oh, it's easy. How come they're not doing this? How come they're not doing yeah. that? Um, and you can see where you get something in from the administration, you get something in, and you listen to the community. We do read the testimony. So I yeah. tell everybody, if you have anything to say about this bill, write it in in testimony because it's on the record. We read it and we try to adjust and make changes to the bill. And that's what the whole process is about. Make changes to the bill to address the concern that we're trying to correct with that bill. So write in, don't just say, I like it or I don't like it. It's, why you like it, why you don't like it, and what things can you correct. Ah, your experience counts on that sort of thing for sure. Um, the other thing that flows out of this is, uh, gee whiz, uh, you're a state senator. I mean, uh, I mean, you know, when we came in the door uh, at the studio, everybody stood up. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> that's because I made them stand you up. You made Sharon. them stand up. <laughs> if you don't stand up, you gotta go. <laughs> but you do have epaulets. You do have a title. And, uh, you know, a lot of people who used to call you Sharon, they, they call it's you Senator Sharon. Sharon. <laughs> they call me Sharon. <laughs> so and that helps you get things done, too. It does. It's not just a, a matter of respect or genuflection. It uh, it's actually helps you get things done. Can you talk about how that works? Yeah, I said previously I would call them and, you know, I get a call back or I don't get a call back. <laughs> <laughs> and for the most part, when I <laughs> don't get a call back, you know, I keep trying and trying, and I, you know, get a call back maybe, you know. Um, <laughs> well, that's different now. Yeah, at least and they if call she me back. calls you, you better call her back. <laughs> at least they call me back now. <laughs> they still get the same answer. They call back. <laughs> um, I think I think there is something, especially people who have to work with the state um, and state agencies. Um, I see state agencies needing to work faster, needing to, to not lose focus about why they're there. Um, and, and I know that side of the house as well, about how you can kick the can down the road saying they can't do something, or you can say this is our mission central and we need to get this done. So, um, so I, I think It's very important that. for state government, especially in it Hawaii. Is, it then, is, yeah. yeah. And, and, for example, affordable housing and, and the Singapore model was, was really something that, you know, they say, well, we can't do that because it's a, it's, it's a uh, you know, uh, they, they do things differently there, they, they, they're autocratic and so on and so forth. The fact of the matter is when you look at the operating mechanism, sure, it could come from the top and they, uh, 
uh, Li, Li, Quan, Li Quan, Quan Yu has already passed. But the fact of the matter is they had Mission Central. They had a goal. We were going to house everybody. In the 60s, they had slums. They had no place for people to live. 50 years later, everybody job. has a roof over their head. It may be differently done than we would do, but it was Mission Central. So when we went to talk to these different agency heads, or even not the agency head, it would be some staff at a lower level. It was the same message. This is what we have. We have to have so many thousand homes this year. The target is this. If we're going to put everybody is going to have it's a roof. Planning. Who is resi a resident will have housing. And they have now a real integrated way. So they've got housing development board builds the housing within this you know, amount of um, the cost. And then the, the Central Provident Bank, they, 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 the fund, they, they make the employer pay 17%, the individual pay 20%, and you have now a fund that pays for health care, for your retirement, and you can use for mortgage for your down payment and pay for your housing. It's all integrated, and it's long-range plan, but not only a plan. We all have plans. It's the plan is implemented. Implemented. And, and it has a know, huge effect on the yes, people in Singapore yes, and Singapore's economy. And 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 the whole the whole thrust of what they do is that they are doing this for the people. We kind of lose sight that you know we're building housing, not the cost of the housing, but we're building housing for people. So what do our people need? And we lose sight of that because we're looking at cost and we're looking at other the, the building and the, you know so on. But all of that is in Singapore, was all focused on, we've got to do this because the people need it. So glad that Stanley Chang organized that trip. He's done Singapore. a great so job. So glad you went with him. Yeah. And, and there you, were 40 you... plus people that went, all with a right? commitment to building affordable housing. Well, and, and you came back with lessons. You, you, know, yes. you, saw, you saw what they did, what Lee Kuan Yew organized there years ago. Uh, great success, maybe a global success. And now you're back. Um, and it's uh, it's in between right now. It's uh, and it's people time who to... went, they still they're still working on it. So yeah. there will be um, Senator Chang is holding a conference, I think, sometime in November. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, um, there there was this last session a bill that was passed uh, to and signed by the governor. So to to provide one hundred fifty thousand dollars to HHFDC to do a study to see what of that Aloha Homes um, concept that was in Aloha, the Senate Bill 1, can be actually developed and really get to 65,000 units, housing units, by 2025. So, so, so there is some momentum building, and hopefully it will continue in the next session. Maybe you'll see some legislation and more, more, um, more people, more to critical To incentivize, yeah. uh, to uh, structure uh, the construction of, of housing. Because other than, well, un, um, to me, employment and housing are the two major, major problems of the state that we have to tackle. It, it's not tomorrow. It's already behind us. And, and you could talk about all the other areas. Well, education is important, of course. And, and so, so is you know, dealing with uh, abuse, mental health, and, and, and crime, and so forth. But if you don't house people, and you don't have jobs that keep our young, talented people. You know, our economy is slipping already. Yeah. yeah. Wow. You have a, a huge burden, you, and you undertake it. On the other hand, you actually look more relaxed than I remember. <laughs> so something along the line here is is. Well, the uh, session is, is the first is session working. is over. <laughs> I got past the first session. <laughs> Go, <"Phew." laughs> That's great. It's great to be able to talk to you, and I hope I can come around at the opening, January 15th. I've been waiting to do this and, and come into your office and schmooze for a minute, you know, and, uh, and also to follow what you're doing. I hope you can come back uh, and, you know, give us, uh, you know, the, the steps in the, in the dynamics so we can understand how these issues are being addressed and, and, uh, and handled in, in policy and implementation. And, and part, of, part of it is, I say, we, we only do the, the law, the policy. And so part of what doesn't happen and we really should do more of is to look at the law that was passed and go back to the agency. We passed this last year. What did you do in there? Right. And we need to start asking more of those questions right. so that they really, the agencies 
have to implement what they get money to do. So I hope to do more of that. Yeah, and to remember you know, how it all came about and connect the dots so you can move forward. I'm so glad you're there. I've been thinking about moving into Kaka'ako. Oh, good. <laughs> you could come now and take my role on at Kaka'ako United. <laughs> Thank you, Sharon. Thank you for coming oh, down. My pleasure. Sharon Moriwaki. Senator Sharon Moriwaki <laughs> to you guys. <laughs> we'll see you in the next session. Okay. Thank you. Aloha. Nice being here again. <laughs>